a lot of work at home because I re I don't want to lose anyone. We are a team. We are going on as a team. Uh, 29. Okay. So this is the last time we foil this. We're done. Okay. Please. So indeed, a plus b squared is the same with a plus b times a plus b. Correct? Yes. We all know that. No, no difficulty there. Correct? Okay. So now when I multiply, I have to actually distribute. I distribute to A, I distribute to B, I distribute to B, B to A, and B to B. Correct? Right. Okay. So then this will be A squared plus AB plus AB again and plus B squared. Right. Correct? Then, of course, we have to combine like terms because these two terms are like terms. And indeed, the answer is this. Now, how do we remember this so we never ever have to foil? Because this is our last time foiling it. So, first term is this plus second term is this. And everything squared. Let's notice something before we continue. How do we call a plus b? What is the name of a plus b? Or if you want x plus y. Or if you want x plus 3, how do we call these? We need the terminology. It's like a foreign language, right? It's like a foreign language. Okay, so like I said to all my students, all my classes, here's a little notebook, right? Please start a little notebook and say terminology or important things to remember or something new that I learn every day in math. Name it the way you want. It doesn't matter. But everything and every new idea, say, oh, I will never foil a plus b squared because I know is blah, 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 blah. And look at this. After you look at this for a month, you're going to know everything is in there, even if you don't want to, because it's repetition. That's the key. So how is this called or this or this? They are called, that's something for the notebook, binomials. They are called binomials because they have how many terms? Awesome. Good. So what did I square here? Awesome. So when I square a binomial, what did I get? Awesome. So this is extremely important. When I square a binomial, I get how many terms? Three. Awesome. When I cube a binomial, by the way, how many terms do you think we're going to get? Four. Exactly. One more than the power. But this is for binomials. When I take a binomial to the tenth power, how many terms will I get? Eleven. Awesome. So now let's continue our journey here because this is not done. Okay, this is equals to what? And we have to understand the pattern. What did I do to the first term? Aha. Uh -huh. Plus. Then what is this term? Where is this term coming from? 2 multiplied by? Two terms. By, by what? By what? Exactly. By the first term times second term and then plus. Exactly. This is what I want you to remember. Not a plus b squared, because your terms may not be a plus b, and they will not be a plus b. So that's the tune that you have to remember and you have to put in your notebook. First term plus the second term, everything squared is the first term squared, plus two times the first times the second plus the second term squared. 
That's it. We are not going to FOIL. So now if I ask you, let's say, how much is 2x plus 3y squared? You are not going to FOIL if you want to make progress. If you want to go with everybody ahead, you will not FOIL. Please try to understand that I'm not forcing something on you because I said so. It's because you want to make your headway towards calculus. First term squared, please. Awesome. Plus 2 from the formula times the first times the second. Multiply the first, multiply by second, and then multiply by 2. Well, well, that's, why. that's it. Plus, the second term squared, please. That's it. Is that clear? Yes. Yep. Are we done with this? But we need practice. Right? Make it, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Good. So, coming back. So, here you have an example. You can make up another one if you want. So the answer here will be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, first term squared plus 2 times the first times the second plus the second term squared. I know I sound like a broken record, and I will sound like a broken rec record for the next 13 weeks. But that's OK. It's for you. What about the second one? And no, we're not foiling. We're done with that. We are foiling in 011 when we first talk about what a polynomial is. This is how you check your work. Right. So, what is this one? Of course, plus b squared. So make what? Make up one. And please do not foil and remember the pattern. First term squared minus two times the first times the second plus the second term squared. You keep a copy and you sign one for me. That's why I gave you two. Oh. Yep. Okay. yep. You keep your own. Oh. So then when you ask a question, I'm going to dig deep and say I have your signature. I don't want to go back to this. I will go back if I need to. But I want us to make progress. OK, what about the last one? Yes. Not possible. A yes. A squared minus B squared because A squared plus B squared is not factorable using integers. This is the correct answer. I know the book says not factorable or prime. No. I can factor A squared plus B squared but I would be using complex numbers. So it's not factorable using integers. So these are three special products that we should never have difficulties with from now on. And we should not ever foil. We're done with that. Unless we're checking over. If you want to. <laughs> I'm sorry? We have to make progress. I want to make sure I answer you. Yes. So it's 2 times 2 times 1. Right? And then it's, and then it would be that. Yes. A, B. So 2A times 4B yes. is 8AB right. times, times two. 2 because there are two terms right. alike. So it's 16AB. Okay. Awesome. I just want to make sure I understand. Yes. Yeah. So if I write it as I wrote it, as first term plus second term, everything squared, that may help you in the long run. Right. So on, on my copy, I just want your signature. I don't need anything else. You don't need to write anything on my copy. So this is our first agreement. Bear with me. It's only supposed to trigger your memories. I'm not going to do anything with this. And at the end of the class, you can have it back. So you 
don't need anything. I don't need your signature. I don't need you to copy oh, so. anything. Okay. That's, 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 that's it. That's right. Good. Okay. Now. Our next step. Please choose a problem from number one. I'm watching you work on problem from number one. Choose a different problem. Okay, so I want to see you work on one problem from one. Yes, A, B, C, D, or E. Any problem? Just one, right? And you choose one. Choose one, and I'm watching you like a hawk. I'm kidding. Papers to write on. You don't have a notebook. Well, I know. It's not great. If you don't, I okay. Yeah. Just, just in case, because you're keeping this. Yeah. I'm not taking. Is this good? Okay. Um, that's it's just a suggestion. I am not going to force you use, to use a, a particular method. If you're happy with the method you know, use it. I'm just suggesting that you compare. That's all I care about. I want you to compare my method to the method you know already and say, I don't like your method. Or say, ah, hmm, maybe it's better than mine. Either or. I'm fine with either or. So which one you did? You did C. Okay. That's good. Okay. Awesome. Very good. Which one are we working on? Uh, problem one. We're working on problem one. We're going to get into it in a minute. Good? Which one are we working on? You can write it in your notebook because you may not have enough room there. It's up to you. Um, a number raised to a negative power does not mean a negative. It could be, okay. but it does not mean negative. Yes, problem. Yes, perfect. You don't have to change it into a. Uh, Yep, okay. improper fraction is fine. Uh, yes, mixed number is fine too. Yeah, we're still working that way. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, which one uh, would you like us to work on? Please choose one from part A. Okay, we want to work on C. Well, <clears throat> C is the easiest. Uh, X to negative 3. This is. Um, any base raised to a negative number, the rule, the exponential rule, is that that changes into a fraction, and the denominator has a positive exponent. So this is 1 over x to the third, and there is nothing else. OK, do we need to work on any other in part 1? So about yes. B. Which one? B. B, as in boy? Yes. Okay, so 2x squared, everything to negative 3, negative 3x to the fourth power. Yep. Very good. So, how are, these, how are these called? Like I asked you here, what is this? And you said, binomial. 
and these two are called first term, second term. So obviously they're called terms. How are these two called? What is the operation between? I don't see any operation. What is the operation between the two of them? Factor. Yes, because it's multiplication, they are called factors. Good. How do I raise the product of two factors to a power? What is the rule, the exponential rule? And then you multiply the exponents. I copy the base and multiply the exponents. Awesome. But what I meant to, say, to ask is this. Maybe I wasn't clear. Um, when I raise a product of two factors to a power, I must raise each factor. Each one, right. Yes, that's what I meant. But you're ahead of me, which is good. So 2 raised to negative 3, x squared raised to negative 3, negative 3 raised to the fourth power, and x raised to the fourth power. Are we OK with this so far? OK, awesome. So now. I know what 2 to negative 3 means. We just reviewed the exponential rule, which is 1 over 2 cubed. Two cubed. Very good. Times. You're right, Paul. You said copy the base. So what happens with the exponents? Multiply. Multiply. So this is negative 6. Now, negative 3 to the fourth power, what type of number would that be? It's going to be positive. Correct. Because, because it's an even exponent. For any even exponent, the answer will always be positive unless there is a minus in front of parentheses, which is a different story. Awesome. So negative 3 to the fourth is? 12. I'm sorry, no. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 9? 81. 81. Awesome. X to the fourth. Very good. So then I have 81 divided by 8. x to negative 6 times x to the 4th. Which operation do I use when I multiply exponential notations with the same base? I don't know what it's called. I just make them add them together. Correct. Copy the base, add the exponents. Add the awesome. Negative 6 plus 4 is? Negative 2. Correct. Since I am not allowed to leave negative exponents in the final answer, the next step would be? In the denominator. Awesome. Imagine that if we do each and every problem like this without you doing a lot of work at home, we are not going to finish the first module in a month or, or so. We are not. That's why I want you to work with me and do the work at home so we can make progress and be able to finish the material. You're not going to be happy if we only do three chapters out of ten in this class. And you're not going to be prepared for calculus. Okay, so are we done with number one? Are we done with number one? So here's what I, if I were a student in this class and I wasn't sure about exponential rules, I would write myself a note. I have no clue. I will review exponential rules. You don't have to write it. But this is what I would write myself a note. I'm not sure about this. So please work on all the other problems and come back next time on Wednesday and say, I'm still not sure about blah, blah, blah. OK, uh, number two. So let's choose one. Number two, it says factor completely. So what are we trying to do when we are factoring? We're trying to change. Right, because it's a trinomial, correct. But we are trying to change a bunch of terms into a of what? We're trying to change a bunch of terms, adding or subtracting, they're all terms, three, four, whatever, into what? This is this is for the notebook. So what is the keyword here? The keyword is factor, right? right? So what am I trying to do? I'm changing a sum or difference 
of terms into, and that's called factor, factoring. I'm changing a sum or a difference of terms into a blah of blah. Into a Why do we call these factors? Because these two quantities are exactly. Why do we call these two terms? Because the two quantities are added or subtracted. Perfect. So I want to change a sum or a difference of terms into a right. Right. Into a product, not division. Product. Product of factors. awesome. This is what factoring is all about. I am changing a bunch of terms added, subtracted into a product of factors. First of all, why would I want to do that? Isn't that a headache? Number one is simplification by factoring. I also gave you a handout. So factoring is used in simplifying expressions. We're going to get to that. Don't worry, you don't have to look for it right now. No. Okay? Yeah. Right here. A second application is solving equations. Right. Good. So which uh, problem are we working on? Two. Okay. So let's choose a problem. And let's see what we come up with. Choose any problem from number two. Are we done with number two? Okay, choose a problem from number two. And I want to see you work on this. We're factoring anything from number two. As I mentioned, I have office hours before your class. I am normally here at about 4 o'clock. If you think you need help on one-on-one, -on -one, I strongly recommend, please, come in early. I'll be, I'll be waiting for you in this room from 4 o'clock. And I'll be more than happy to sit down and work with you on any problem. That's another note to self. I have to review factoring. I really don't remember it. Okay, so which problem are we working on? Which one? B as in boy? Okay, very good. That's the easiest. We're going to do E as well. Fine. Okay. So, first of all, when I'm given a polynomial to factor, the first 
thing that I ask myself, the first question that I ask myself is, what is it? Because if it's a binomial, I apply a certain strategy. If it's a trinomial, a totally different strategy. If it's a polynomial, four or more, a totally different strategy. So first I have to identify what it is. Oh, it's a trinomial. Is it in descending order? And you could say, but wait a minute, there are two variables in there. How will I know which one? Well, normally h is not considered a variable. It's more of a parameter. It's not really. So I'm, I will rearrange everything based on powers of x. Right. So then this is 2x squared plus 5xh minus 4h. So remember my first question was, what is it? 2x squared. Yes, I, I did. Thank you so much. So first, my first question was, what is it? My second question is, is it in descending order? My third question is, is there a greatest common factor anywhere? Yes. So then I have 2x squared plus 5x minus 4. So that's my first step. The greatest, my, my third step, I should say, the greatest common factor. Now, now I see this is a trinomial with only one variable, right? And I will try to see if I can factor it. Is there a special product? That's my first thought. What do I mean by the special product? It's a trinomial. Is it this or this? That's one of the reasons why I kindly ask you not to, not to FOIL anymore. Because as long as you FOIL, you will always have difficulties going backwards. The more you FOIL, the more difficult it will be to uh, factor such a trinomial. That's why I would like you to move away from, fact, from, from uh, FOILing. So when I'm given a trinomial to factor, after I clean it up, after I arrange it in descending order, after I factor out the greatest common factor, this is my thought. Can I apply this or this? The answer is no in this case. Why is it no? Because this is not a perfect square. Remember, we got first term squared, but this doesn't come from anything squared. What was the last term? The last term squared, but this doesn't come from anything squared. So a special product, although I was hoping for one, it's not working. Yeah. Yeah. Now my next question is, is the leading coefficient 1? Well, unfortunately, it's not 1. If it were 1, then it would have been easier to factor. OK. Final option. And there is nothing beyond that. If this last option or this last method doesn't work, it's not factorable using integers. So what is the last option? I will have to find, try to find two numbers whose product is this. And whose sum is this. Well, I can't find two numbers whose product is negative 8. If the product is negative, one of them must be positive, one of the other one has to be negative. So what are the options for negative 8? 1 and 8, 2 and 4. Right. One of them negative or yeah, the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can't get a positive 5 out of those two. So I will say this is it. Done. So the only thing I could do here is just factor out the greatest common factor and arrange it in descending order. There is nothing else I can do. I have a handout, but not for this class. I didn't expect this that I'm going to post for you. I have it for the other class that I have for your class, which is this. And this handout is made by me. And um, it tells you everything about factoring. Descending order, greatest common factor. I'm going to make a copy for you. And the options here, call binomial, trinomial, polynomial. So I'm going to make a copy of this for you and also post it. Okay, so can I succeed in this class without factoring? Of course. Is it an important skill to have? Yes. yes.
Okay. I also have, but it's again, it's for the other class, which is a um, knowledge algebra class. I have another handout. I had to bring too much today. today. Um, so for them, I have this handout on factoring. If you want, I can make a copy for you too. That I'm giving out tonight. It has. Oh, uh, it's probably no, no, no. It's fine. It's probably. Um, I should have deleted the last thing, so that's why I printed it out. Okay. So if you want this one, I can give this to you next time. Okay. Uh, is there anything else in part two that we need to do? E. Okay. So x squared minus 7x squared minus 4x plus 28. I'm sorry, of course. Thank you. Okay. So I have to go through the same steps. What are the same steps? Descending order. Yes. Greatest common factor. No, there is no special product here. We don't discuss special product for four terms. It's way beyond the scope of the course. So we're going to talk about special product. But so we, I'm here. Right. What is the only option for four terms? Factoring, factoring. Exactly. So I'm going to do this. And this is what I always do. I'm not making this up. Of course, I don't cover it, but I don't look at it. So I'm going to ask myself, from the first two terms, what can I factor out? Okay. What is left in parentheses? X minus 7. What do I have to have coming out from the other two? Because if I don't, I won't be able to continue. But that's your hint. That's your hint. What should I have in parentheses coming from the other two? X seven. Of course. If I don't get an x minus 7, I won't be able to move on. Okay. And now, only now, I look at the last two terms, so wait, not wait, before. Wait, 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 wait. In a moment. If I don't have an x minus 7 from coming out from both pairs of terms, I will not be able to factor. I will write it first because who knows, as you said, how did you get that? Who knows what I come up with? It has to be x minus 7. Okay. So, now I look. I need a sign and I need a factor. If you just put the sign and other without the factor or just the factor without the sign, you're not going to get the answer. So what is the sign and what is the factor? Please. Minus four. Perfect. Let's check. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times negative 7 is 28. So if you don't copy x minus 7, you may be tempted to write x plus 7, and then you're not going to get anywhere. So write it first, and then look. Of course, you, you're not allowed to make it up. Is that because you're assuming it's a special product? Uh, it's, it's not a special product. It's factoring by grouping. Uh, okay. There is no special product. We're not talking about special products for four terms. We talk about special products for binomials and trinomials, not for four terms. Good. So then uh, what comes out from these two terms? From this term and from this term, they both have a common factor, which has to be put in front. X minus x squared. Of course. What is left in parentheses? X squared minus four. Right. But remember, we have an agreement. And we know how to handle x squared minus 4. Again, if you continue foiling it, you're going to have difficulties going backwards. So how do I factor x squared minus 4? Uh, x plus 4 and x minus 4. Careful. Or 2. Exactly. Awesome. So the complete factorization of this polynomial is this. You see, we we only have been talking for about 10 minutes, and these three came up. That's the reason why I want to carve this in stone now. Okay. 
Um, problem three. Please choose anything you want and let's work on it. These are equations and inequalities. All this is part of the previous course. I'm not making this up and I'm not saying, you know, you, this is totally new. If it is new, please come to see me. If it looks totally foreign to you, please don't wait. Can I do that? No. Nope. Two students chose the smoothest possible problem of all of them. They have to do one more. Three students chose the easiest. They have to do one more. Here have no idea. Three of my friends here have no idea. They're breaking my heart. It's, it, that's that's why that's my point. That's my point. Uh, let's see. Uh, you cannot change an inequality in an equation. Okay. Which problem are we going to pick? Which one? E. Good. So in E we have 2x over x minus 3 minus 6 over x equals 18 over x squared minus 3x. Yes. This is the most involving of all of them in this particular problem. Very good. What type of equation is this? Is it an equation, by the way, or inequality? Perfect. It has a left-hand side, it has the equal symbol, and it has the right-hand side. We agree? Yes. Okay. Now we have to identify the type. What type is it? Do not ever be afraid to be wrong. Because I can correct your thinking if you don't tell me anything. Right? So, can anyone point out the trinomial to us? Or read the trinomial from here? Any one of those first two? Right. So now let's come back. Is this a trinomial? No. Okay. Awesome. So what type of equation is it? What is specific here? What strikes you immediately? That's what it is. It's a rational equation. Of course. 
is a rational equation. Okay, now let's go and talk about fractions. What could go wrong with a fraction? That's zero on the denominator. Awesome. Did you hear that? That's zero. zero in the denominator. That is the only worry I have. If you give me any fraction, I'm going to be able to give a number back. If you say 1 half, I'm going to say 0.5. If you say 10 over 2, I'm going to say 5. If you say 0 over 10, I'm going to say 0. But if you say 5 over 0, I'll say sorry. I can't. So that's our note here. Division by 0 is called? Exactly. This is a fancy word that replaces it does not exist. There is no number that replaces division by zero. Awesome. Good. So knowing that, I'm going to copy the problem. I'm going to move this term to the other side or subtract. I'm going to factor completely the denominator. How do I factor x squared minus 3x? That's the only thing I can do, just factor out the greatest common factor. And now you have to tell me what is left on the right hand side. So I move this term, or I subtracted this term, whatever you want to say, to the other side. It changed its sign. And what is left on the right? Absolutely. If you don't write zero, you are not going to solve the equation. You're just going to change it into an expression, and you're not go never going to get x. Awesome. Good. So there are two restrictions. X cannot be anything it wants to be. There are two restrictions. What are the X values that we cannot allow in this problem? Three. Yes, I cannot allow three. And zero. Yeah, I cannot allow zero. Awesome. Now the next step is I have to find the least common denominator. Notice what I did. Again, if you have already accomplished a, or know a method, forget about mine. But if you don't know any method, please copy this or compare to what you know. Okay, what is the... So I wrote a... I drew a long fraction line. I have to copy the equal symbol and I have to copy zero. Because if I don't, who knows? Like with the previous problem, I want to put my x minus 7 in there before I even look. Who knows? I may, I may make the mistake of putting plus here. Who knows? And then I'm not going to be able to continue. So in order to avoid any error, I copy x minus 7 first. I cannot fabricate it, right? Negative 4 times x and negative 4 times negative 7. But I know it should be there. Okay, so what is the least common denominator here? Awesome. Thank you very much. So now we need adjustments. I'm going to write something and then delete it. I can't delete it. I, I have to write it again. So do not write this. This will be a terrible mistake. Why? Because I had to, once I multiply x minus 3 by x, I have to do the same thing to the top. Yes. Once I multiply x by x minus 3, I have to do the same thing to the top. Yep. Here, I don't have to change anything. Awesome. Thank you. So then this one will need an x because it does not have x. This one, the numerator, needs an x minus 3. And this one, I'll say, needs a 1. You don't have to write the 1. Let me explain this one more time. When I multiply x minus 3 by x, I have to do the same thing to the top. When I multiply x by x minus 3, I have to do the same thing to the top. If I multiply the denominator by 1, I have to multiply the numerator by 1. OK, so now please tell me what to write. Careful. And minus? Awesome.
Let's look at this one more time. 2x times x is 2x squared. Negative 6 distributed to x. Negative 6 distributed to negative 3. And negative 1 times 18 is negative 18. Wait, so why would we? Oh, that's right. Sorry. Right, because we will combine like terms. That's our next step. Here's my question for you. Can I write 0 over 1? Can I write 10 over 1? Can I write 5 over 1? Can I write x over 1? Can I write 0 over 1? Awesome. Good. So now the new equation... is 2x squared minus 6x over x times x minus 3 equals 0 over 1. This is a very important type of what, again, what equation, what type of equation is this again? Fraction. Awesome. It's a, it's a very, I'm sorry? Because any number can be written over 1. Okay. 5 is 5 over 1, 10 is 10 over 1, 0 is 0 over 1. That's okay, you can come in if you want, is it? Okay. So, I thought she was from my next class. Um, so, what type of, it is a special type of rational equation, what type? It looks like this. It has a very important name. That's again for our no little notebook. It's a rational equation, but a special type of a rational equation. What is it? It's a proportion. proportion. Why is it so important? Because only in a proportion I can say it again. Awesome. Only in a proportion I can cross multiply. If it's not a proportion, I cannot cross multiply. So I will write that AD equals BC. So please cross multiply and tell me what is left after you cross multiply. So notice, awesome, notice that we, you could have not done this here. This is not a proportion. Right. This is a rational equation. We had to do some work to change it into a proportion. We did. So uh, as you said, 2x squared minus 6x equals? Zero. Awesome. What type of equation is this? It is a binomial, but it, because the degree is 2, the equation has a special name. That's again for our notebook. Awesome. Good. How do I solve a quadratic equation? Yes, it is. Awesome. Yes. That's a very good, very good oh, step. Yeah. And you awesome. You have to have zero on one side. Absolutely. Okay, very good. Two keywords I'm going to ask you always in this class. One is factor, and the other one is simplify. So in the back of your mind, you should always, when you are given anything to do, anything, two key words, factor, simplify, factor, simplify, factor, simplify. I'm looking at this quadratic equation and I'm tempted to divide by both sides by... Awesome. I am tempted to divide by x. Never. Never. Note. But that's, a, that's tempting, isn't it? Note, never, stress on never, divide 
both sides of an equation or inequality by an expression having the variable by x or x minus 2 or x plus 5 or 2x squared by the variable never we're not yeah we're factoring right right but I but I want to simplify you can factor if you want to I want to simplify but I cannot simplify by x but I can simplify by 2 but I'm not by x why can't you I will, but I want to simplify. Okay. So this is x squared minus 3x equals 0. And now you're right. I will factor out x, and I get x minus 3. By the zero product principle, zero product principle, zero product principle, the equation x times x minus 3 equals 0 has two possibilities, two options. What are they? But we just talked about this. And we stated exactly. We stated restrictions from the get-go. And we said, we will accept anything, but not 0 and 3. So very good conclusion. Thank you, Joey. <laughs> no solutions. I recommend this method of solving rational equations. Again, if you're comfortable with a different method, I'm fine. Right. So my question is, I know the only person with factoring, right?